The next question is from Chris Alvarez with ABC7. Hi, Steph. I just wonder, um, did you have a list or, or like going into the season, obviously you were hurt last year, motivation-wise, do you make goals before a season? And then a quick follow-up is um, with Cannon, uh, did, uh, what's better, is Euro step or is shirt lift? The, the Euro step for sure. That was, uh, he did that on his own. We, uh, we had to show him the, the flesh out celebration. He's good at imitating stuff, but the, the Euro step was, was something on his own. Um, but for this season, I mean, the goal of, every year, it's, it's not individual accolades. It's not a certain points per game or assists or anything like that. It's, um, just being prepared physically, mentally to start a season and do the things that I know I can do well. Um, and usually that takes care of itself in terms of production and, um, you know, continue to get better. So, you know, coming into the year, it's it's kind of vague for me and how I approach it because um, when I'm locked in on the process of how I get ready for a season and how I go through training camp and how I get ready for each game, I honestly get lost in that. And then the work shows itself throughout the course of the year. Um, I don't like the work you know, backwards where you, you set a goal and that's the only thing you're really focused on in terms of trying to hit numbers because you might sell yourself short if you do that, um, you know, coming into a year. Next question is from Dan Wojcik, uh, LA Times. Hey, Steph. Um, if this was a, a seven-game series, I'm, I'm sure people like myself and other pundits would break down matchups and, and stuff like that. I, I'm, I'm curious, who do you think a one-game series um, who's who, to whose advantage is that, and and sort of what do you just generally make of the format? No, I, mean, I hope it's in our advantage in terms of you know just the better team that night. You know, seven game series, obviously, uh, every game can kind of take a different shape, and um, you can win a game scoring one hundred thirty. You can win a game scoring ninety. Uh, it could be a defensive battle. It could be a, just an all-out shootout, you know, foul trouble, matchup, changes, all that type of stuff plays. But when it comes to one game, you know, whoever plays better tomorrow night, you know, obviously, you know, should win. And, and that comes down to execution and, uh, you know, how locked in you are mentally to, to the task at hand, knowing what the other team's strengths are. Um, because you won't have as much time to adjust, um, you know, without you know games coming coming uh, behind us. So they are at home. That does you know matter. But uh, I feel like we can come in gun slinging, ready to uh, start the game off hot and and carry the momentum that we've had over the last you know twenty or so games. Next up, Wes Goldberg with the Bay Area News Group. Uh, hey Steph, um, you guys only played these Lakers once when they both had when they had LeBron and AD available, and, and um, this is the first time you've played you know a Lakers team with LeBron in a playoff type of atmosphere. But given how much you guys have gone back and forth in the playoffs in the past, do you feel comfortable knowing what to expect tomorrow? Yeah, there's familiarity with with uh, them at full strength. I don't know if anybody else was missing outside of AD and Brown when we came down here and won the first time, but um, like you said, we we had a different identity when we when we came back here right right after it was right after All Star break and right before I can't remember, and uh, and then when they came to to the Bay, we were a different team than we are now too. So kind of works both ways, um, and you know in that conversation. Uh, they haven't seen this this group of eight that are, have, have been out, you know, uh, playing at a high level and playing a different style. And to your point, we hadn't seen them healthy since uh, we came down here early in the season, so uh, back in January. So I think it's going to be um, who can who can study up the best and and know what the certain patterns are. And then obviously we know we're undersized. Um, we got to play physical, got to play smart. Um, 
and, and lock up that paint to give ourselves a chance to let our speed take over and let uh, you know our style kind of win the night. Uh, how much more difficult is it against a team like this that really kind of knows you guys to to do some of your normal action? Um, and just what kind of challenge do they present defensively against you guys? Oh, we played against Braun plenty of times, and he knows kind of some of our sets, and there's a lot of experience there that goes both ways in terms of how he, you know, tries to get into his actions and get getting everybody involved and obviously being a scoring threat. So there's a lot of familiarity there. You know, in a game like this, it just comes down to execution in terms of knowing they're a great defensive team, and if you're not aggressive and don't play with force and get into your spots and setting great screens and cutting hard, you're going to play right into their hands because they are extremely talented and long and and uh, and smart on the defensive end. So, um, you know, that's on us to start the game off on the on the right note of attention to detail and and being organized. Um, but then it also goes into the full game plan, you know, that we have and. And, you know, you got to play defense. You got to be smart on, on both ends of the floor. Um, and whoever's, you know, matchups in front of you, take it personally. Um, you know, total team defense. And for us, that'll be the success that we're ever going to have tomorrow um, if we lock in from the jump and and, uh, and play our brand of basketball, but do it with force. Do you expect them to go Davis at center a good amount? I don't know. Uh, we got we've talked about that. We talked about a lot of different matchups they can put out there, you know, especially with their front court. They have three or four options that they can put together. And they're obviously huge with Braun, AD, and Drummond at the uh, in that starting lineup. So I mean, there's a lot of different looks that they can throw out, but the game plan doesn't change that much. Um, Knowing that you know whoever they out there, they're probably gonna be bigger than us. And the last question for Steph will come from Mark Medina with the USA Today. Hey Steph, good to see you. Were you? What, 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 you got to show everybody your shirt. You're gonna be disappointed. It's all sweatshirts. That's the nice suit, you. <laughs> Very disappointing. I apologize. Hey, uh, LeBron was touting you MVP the other day. Uh, but there's a good number of Warrior fans that are questioning his motives and think there's some sort of gamesmanship with that. How do you look at that? <laughs> uh, I, I love the uh, – no matter if it's him, it's me, whoever it is, there's always uh, another element of anal analytics or analyzing what we say and how we say it and when we say it, so – Bron's no uh, no stranger to that. Neither are we. Um, obviously, I'm appreciative of he knows when he says something, people pay attention. So for him to speak on my MVP candidacy is uh, definitely I respect him for it. I appreciate it. Um, we all know as competitors, though, when the lights are on, I can talk about how great he is till I'm blue in the face, and he can do the same doesn't change how we approach, uh, you know, that, that competition when we're out there. Um, and I won't be giving him a pass because he likes the way I played this year and, and vice versa. So it's it's great for uh, the entertainment value of, of what we do. And uh, I, I, I kind of love the chatter because it's, 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 it's hilarious and it's, it's awesome all at the same time, but it'll make for a good show tomorrow.